Hello, I'm Helen Gurley Brown. Few things can boost your spirits more than a complete makeover. After all, the better you look, the happier you are inside. The problem is, makeovers are usually available only through salons. That's why we created this special Cosmo 20-minute makeover. Professional step-by-step -step makeup instruction that you can do at home. It's a marvelous way to enhance your natural beauty. So come on, create a beautiful new look for yourself and start turning some heads. It's amazing how a complete makeover can make us look and feel so wonderful, like a fresh spring sunlit day. In order to get the most of your makeover, make sure you begin with a good cleansing of your skin. You want to make sure that any dirt or old makeup is washed away, keeping your pores open and your skin looking fresh. The second step before your makeover is to moisturize your skin. By applying a moisturizer that penetrates quickly and isn't greasy, you provide a wonderful shield between your skin and your makeup. Oil of Olay Daily Cleansing Lotion gives you a deep, gentle cleaning, rinses completely away, and leaves your face looking and feeling fresh, clean, and radiant. To help maintain the moisture and natural oil balance of your skin, use Oil of Olay Beauty Fluid to replenish your skin with nourishing moisture and essential emollients so similar to those found abundantly in younger skin. Your makeover will look fabulous, natural and fresh. When you apply Oil of Olay, your makeup will glide on, giving you even coverage, a healthy, natural look. Oil of Olay Beauty Fluid helps prevent cracking and flaking of your makeup, even after hours of wear. No wonder millions of women worldwide begin and end their day with Oil of Olay. And now, let the Cosmo 20-Minute Makeover take you from the everyday to the dazzling look of the Cosmo Girls. First, Sandy Linter, internationally known makeup artist, whose clients have included Raquel Welch, Lauren Hutton, and many other celebrities, will take you through each step in the art of the makeover. Then, Glenn B's resident hairstylist, Anthony DeMay, will present three new looks from casual to formal to high fashion for exciting nights on the town. We can do any kind of makeup. I'm going to do a casual, chic makeup that a woman can wear from day into the evening. First, I'll start with the moisturizer, which keeps the makeup on smoothly and stays fresh all day. This should be applied very, very lightly. Work it in around the eyes and blend out the rest of the face. You would never apply a foundation without putting a moisturizer on first. Let it sink in a couple of minutes. And then, while it's sinking in, go right to the eye makeup. Most people do the foundation, but I'll show you why doing the eyes first works out better. Put a little bit of base across the lid. Spread it out very finely, so it should not be thick or greasy. And this will help your pencils and eyeshadows go on smooth. And stay on. Okay. I've chosen a very soft brown to contour the eyes 
and gives them shape and depth. And what you do is you start with the outer corners, heavy in the outer corner, and go into the crease of the eye. This just shapes the eye. And this should be blended with a full shadow brush. Like this one. Blend the pencil up over this bone, the eye bone, to the tip of the outer brow. And you have a nice soft shadowing effect. It also helps enlarge the eye. It's best to use a very full brush to do this. So it blends it nice and evenly and quickly. And the eye is shaped in that area. Then take a very small brush and a darker brown shade. The brush should be very, very small and firm so it gets the shadow on in a strong way, like this. See, it should go on very strong. The darkest color is going to be on the eyelid next to the eyelashes. And we're retracing where we had just applied the pencil. Okay, you wouldn't go up any higher than that with the dark color. A little bit more for the other side. But the sizes and shapes of the brushes that I'm using are very important. I'm working on the eyelid. The, this is the outer corner of the eye. And this is under the eye bone or the crease of the eye. So what I'm doing is penciling the eyes first and coloring over the pencil with an eyeshadow. Now I used a tan color pencil to give for the crease of the eye here, and I'm using a tan color eyeshadow to go over that. But when I work in a large area, I use a large brush. So this brush is larger than the brush used for shading on the lid. And it's blended very, very softly to the tip of the outer brow. And always blend in an upward direction, always up over this bone. The last place you would work your color is on the eyelid itself. Let me see, open up. So here again, I'll put a very soft neutral color. And this you can do with a sponge tipped applicator. on the eyelid. I'm working in browns and neutral beiges because I feel that these are colors that look good on everyone. And when you would go out in the evening, you don't have to change the color because it goes well with any outfit. And none of these colors are iridescent. 
They're all flat beiges and browns. So that also means it can go from day into the evening. Okay, now in order to avoid a sad look, meaning if you make the eyeshadow come down, it's going to look very sad. So always blend up. Now the reason I did the eyes first was because when I work, eyeshadow falls on the skin underneath. So this way you just clean up a little bit with a cleanser and then apply your foundation. And this saves a lot of time. Um, the next step would be curling the lashes. And this is a gruesome looking little machine, but it works and I'll show you how. Just look down and look that way. Perfect. You want to curl the base of the lash, not just bend it. So you've got to pump the machine. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Put it at the base, pump, slide it a little bit, and then pump again. All right, and then mascara. See, with the eyeshadow, you want a nice, big, wide open effect. That's why it should always be darker on the outside and light on the inside, and that gives you a wide-eyed look, which is what everyone wants. The mascara, I work with just the tip of the wand, just to here, because otherwise, if you work like this, sometimes five eyelashes get stuck together, and it's not a good look. So just work with the tip of the wand and lift from the base of the lash and up. And you can do two coats, three coats, but make sure you separate them when you work on them. I'm going to line under the eyes also for a little bit more depth. And how I do that, I connect what I've done up on top to under the eye. You run this pencil right through the lower lashes and stop about halfway. Don't go all the way in. Don't put the pencil up higher and into the eye. You'll create a small look should be right through your under lashes. That's it, on the outer sides of the eye. And we're ready for foundation. And I've chosen a color that's a bit brighter and lighter maybe than your real skin color. 
think that will bring out the eyes and bone structure even more. I'm applying it with a Q-tip because it's easier for me. I, I'm sure that I won't miss any areas this way. And it's cleaner than using your fingers if you have long nails. And this gets blended in almost the way you would blend in a treatment cream. It's a little brighter than her natural skin color, but that's what we want. It's perfect. When you blend under the eye, make sure you go against the grain of the skin, which means that. In some areas, you might want a little bit heavier application. It's simple, you just do the same thing. A good base should blend very, very well. You should never have a line of demarcation between the neck and the face. And try not to choose a foundation that has too much pink or peach in it. You should stick to the beige tone because the pinks and peach can turn red or orange during the day, and that's not pretty. Okay, then you should go over that, pat it down with a makeup sponge. Use a very soft one, not one of those hard, heavy ones. And blend the foundation into the hairline so that there is no line of demarcation. And pat the foundation. This doesn't mean rubbing it off. It means patting it so that it's smooth and very evenly applied. I'm going to put a little bit of the same shadow base that I used before in the inner corner under the eye. And most people, when they need to lighten up their eyes, would do it right there, just two dots. Not a big deal, not a lot of white. Just a nice thin coat right in here to lighten you up. And now powder. I like to start on the cheeks or the chin, not under the eyes, work around and then go in the center. And this should give a nice matte look, a finished look. Okay, now blush. and work right on top of the bone. Not under, but lay the blusher right on top. 
into the hairline and the outer temple. Stop about two fingers from the nose. I'd like to um, add mascara to the lower lashes and I'll show you how it's done. Hold the wand vertically so that you just can touch and separate the lashes as you work. You have less of a chance of getting the mascara on your skin when you work like this. And then we'll do the brows. They should be brushed up and then filled in. Fill in working from underneath, not from up here, but under here. Her brow needs to be strengthened right in this area where she's a little bit thin. Short strokes, short, tiny strokes. And always brush the brows after you've filled them in. The shadow should end at the tip of the outer brow, and the beginning is just filled in a tiny bit. Okay, now I'm going to outline the mouth. Use a nice soft lip pencil, and start at the outer corner, and go down. The outer corner, and go down. And from this corner, go up and over the lip ridge right here. This gives the appearance of a fuller mouth in a very, very natural way. And I've chosen a bright coral, very fresh coral. I think it will complement the use of the brown shadow. And this is the only thing that a woman might want to change at the end of the day if it doesn't match the outfit she's wearing. This makeup should be able to be worn during the day into the evening and with minimal touch-ups, perhaps powder, perhaps a change of lipstick. And that's it. Now that your makeup has been applied, we're gonna do one of three different looks. First look, we're going to utilize your own hair. We're going to apply a little setting lotion through the length. And to give it a little extra body, a little bit of styling gel in through the roots. Now, I'm going to apply a little air. Working all around your head. And I'm going to have you throw your head upside down for me, which is the best way to maintain body and very long hair. Come forward more. And for most of the time, you're just going to use your hands to get most of the moisture out. I brush up so that I get extra body in the root area, always up and away. If you notice, I'm using a good flat brush for this. I haven't gotten into using a round brush at this point, but a good flat brush will get your hair dry and give you a lot of body. Now, most of your hair is dry. I start taking small sections and bring the hair forward.
When we have the basic shape in, we're going to go through with a round brush and add a little more bend into the fringe. I think you should finish this look off with a comb and just kind of comb through the lens. Okay, look number one. Okay, I think we're ready now for our second look. I think we'll try something a little more evening, something off the face. And what we'll do is direct the hair off the face first. And then we're going to apply a little bit of mousse. Spread it in the palm of your hands. Work it around the hairline. Okay, once this is in Landry's hair, take a blow dryer, and we're going to simply flow the hair in the direction we want. Okay, now that we've dried Landry's hair off her face, we're going to go in Place the hair and finish it with a little spritz. Let it dry. And that's a very clean evening look. Okay, for our third look, we'll do something a little more casual. We'll go through, we'll mist Landry's hair with a little water. Then we're going to apply a little bit of gel, just a little. Always rub it between the palms of your hands. And we're going to go through and just crunch all through the length of the hair, kind of shaking it out. We're going to go for a more tousled, a little more wild of a look that will really work for daytime or for evening. When we've gotten her hair pretty wet and crunched with gel, we're going to go through with our diffuser. Once again, I'm going to ask you to throw your head upside down for me. Okay. Always mist your hands with a little water and Finish off. Then we have a really natural look. Remember, when you go to the salon, talk with your stylist. The main ingredient of a makeover is that you leave happy. So remember, talk.